people uh to get to know in modeling so we've worked together i think four times now okay and i don't feel like i know anything about you generally really? T- today you've been quite chatty okay yeah so that does bode well for the next sort of hour or whatever <laughs> it's going to be but um your outside impression mm-hmm. from from an outside point of view you come across as someone who is uh, a model as mm-hmm. a job and yep. then wants nothing to do with modeling after you have done modeling okay yeah is that fair i think that's very fair yeah do you, um, do you find the community quite dramatic or uh the community yeah i mean i think it's just more exhausting than anything like i like i, I can understand when you said that you, you don't really feel like you can get an impression of who i am and i think i am quite like right this when i'm at work it's work and outside is my personal life. I do have that very clear distinction. And I think that's just to maintain a level of professionalism. Like I'd hate to think that somebody couldn't have a conversation with me, but yeah, I don't like, I don't like lines crossing. Yeah. I think as well, it's, you stand out a bit more because we're in an age where everybody wants everything to be publicized. Yeah. And you don't. From yeah. what I can see, and not that I, I'm not saying I've spent like an inordinate amount of time no, yeah, trying to of figure course. you out, but just from the times we've worked together. Although you did weird me out when we worked <laughs> together for a commercial job, and I thought you were, I I thought you were quite antisocial. Okay, from our first shoot together because I was quiet on our first shoot. Yeah. And it was a very short one and you were quite quiet. Don't worry. It doesn't matter if you don't remember it. It's fine. <laughs> I'm just trying to think. And then we did this commercial shoot. And I remember I'm trying to work out what's actually going on because there wasn't really a plan in place. I'm trying yeah. to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing. And then I turn around and you're saying to Fleur, the other model, about, mm-hmm. oh, you don't want to go to that nightclub. You want to go to this nightclub. Oh. Cause God, and I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. So she does stuff. I just, yeah, you're, no. you're someone who almost seems like you only exist as a model. Oh yeah, no, that's that's really strange actually. Yeah, Fleur, Fleur, Fleur herself. She um she's from Portsmouth, which is down the road from where I grew up. Um, but yeah, no, no, no I do actually have a very active social life. Yeah, and I, I do like you, a ha- drink. you have a life. I do, I do. Yeah, now I just it, I'm probably quite clinical the way I I treat my job. I mean, it, it's different as well because I meet different people every time I work. I'm not ever around like the same people, so it's hard to like actually get 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 on a deeper level with someone really in yeah. a short space of time and like, yeah. when you're doing it day in day out like I enjoy the that process where you're like speaking to someone but I still equally don't like taking it further than that because realistically you know this is part of a job yeah like I wouldn't want to think I wouldn't want people to think that I wouldn't be up for having a, a meaningful conversation with someone but I don't see the point in I don't know being I can't think I can't even think of the word like I don't know, exaggerating something for the sake of making it something it's not, if that makes any sense. Yeah, no, it's, it's, I think it depends on like what your long-term goals are. Obviously you're working as a model quite prolifically, I'm assuming. Well, look, I've been, I've modeled since I was 14, so. So how did you, how did you get in though? What was, um, what was the moment you decided to model? I actually wanted to model. Um, I think it's just that, that general stupid, oh, you know, I'm female and I'm young. Modeling seems so glamorous. Um, I remember those days for me. Yeah, I bet you do. It wasn't really, it wasn't even really anything substantial. And then I just, I just, I actually found Model Mayhem just through a Google search. Right. And I, I created a profile on there and I met a photographer who lived in the area who was actually quite good. Yeah. Um, and he just took some shots of me and I ended up then helping him with photo- like photography wise I had an assistant shoots with him to see how it all worked and like to watch models and yeah. it just literally kind of went from there there was no like moment where I became a model it was just yeah and you're, you said earlier that your um was it your mum's quite actively involved yeah so my mum would always come along with me to shoots because I was under 16 yeah um and then when I was old enough to start doing it I was actually quite experienced as well so I was able to just go and make money from it part-time yeah and then I got signed to an agency and that's that's when it became different in a sense that I wasn't just freelancing I was doing like stuff for brands yeah etc but I do a bit of both now but it's different doing it full-time than to just so when it comes to like doing brand work something that I'm always fascinated by do you have um like a brand you intend to work for? Like, is oh, there a no. specific brand you'd like to work for? Or um, do you just kind of take what's... I mean, the, uh, there's brands I would, in theory, like to work for, but it would never be a case of, right, I'm working with them, I'll pursue that goal. It doesn't really work like that. Like, yeah, I think, this is actually a common thing. Yeah. I'm noticing more and more is, it, especially with 
the and I really despise the word, but the influencer side of things coming in. Yeah. The people are very brand focused to the point where they're almost well they do they outright fake that they've worked for a brand or they fake that like a, a post is or... for the brand yeah and it, i think it's quite limiting i i think i don't know because i don't like i've got a lot of followers on instagram so a lot of people mistake me for being an influencer which i'm absolutely not but right. i don't really actually understand it fully but i think from what i can gather that you would be paid to endorse a product in which case it would be consistent with working with that brand it's kind of but then you get people that because they want to be an influencer, they'll tag the brand, hoping that that will like then generate possibly traffic from that brand and possibly working with them in the future. I, I don't... think I think you've already put more thought into it than most people do. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's because it's relevant. It's like part of my industry in a way. Like I don't Absolutely. necessarily do it, but I'm surrounded by it a lot because there's an Instagram model or there's a model that happens to be on Instagram. Which I'm the latter. Yeah, this is this is my argument with the premise of being an influencer. Yeah. It's the only job you can passively do. You can, it's the only <laughs> yeah. job you can accidentally do. Acc so you just yeah. said that people mistake you for an influencer. Yeah. So you could be influencing people without mm. that ever being on your mind, right? Yeah. yeah you can't yeah. like accidentally work in a restaurant. No. <laughs> you can't accidentally go and collect the bins for the council. Yeah. So being an influencer is the only job where there are people that are deliberately doing something that is incidental. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, in one in, in one in one vein, definitely. But then there's also the more kind of regimented influencing when you're actively pursuing brands or being sent things from brands because you've built up a momentum with your followers, and it's a job. Right. Like I, I've got a friend, well, not a friend, but a friend of a friend who is actually an influencer within sports and fitness. Like she makes a living from it and consistently gets sent stuff from brands. So it's her job to then go and take a picture, keep a consistent look on her Instagram. Like that's a conscious, con she's consciously being an influencer, whereas other people who potentially have a good following, they could be an influence and unbeknownst to them. But yeah. Where, where's the, where's, you're more on the inside of this than I am. And I'm leaning on you here for some insight. What's, okay. what's going to happen if Instagram ceases? What's oh. next for these people? Because you're not a model if Instagram goes away. And not you, but in in, in those... the sense of being an influencer where okay. you are paid by the post or whatever. Yeah, honestly, what's next? Oh, I don't know. Um, I don't know what the next practical step could be. I don't really, know, Because brands have found a fantastic way to spend so little on advertising and have so much reach. Yeah. Compared think... to big campaigns in magazines that they used to pay for or big campaigns on TV, it's now... Uh, here's a person that's cultivated, whether or not it was organically, they've cultivated a following of, say, 100,000 people or 200,000 people or 500,000, whatever it is. Yeah. We'll just, we'll just have their followers. So we'll just, get, we'll just pay them a relatively speaking small amount of money. It's strange. I don't really think the whole principle of being an influencer could work on a different platform. But no. I also don't see a world in which Instagram doesn't exist. Maybe that's naive, but... I... I, well, how, uh, without wanting to be rude, how old are you? Uh, 26. Ugh. Yeah, young. She's young. <laughs> um, I do. I can see it. I've seen stuff. I remember MySpace being like, "It'll never go away." It's the most important. I was thing on in the MySpace, world. so yeah, no, I get it in that sense. But like, some shadow of it would exist, or something. You yeah, know. but it's like Facebook now. Facebook really is just old people now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's probably dominated more so by older old people. It's old people sharing yeah, stuff really that they use... haven't read properly. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Facebook's become. Yeah, that's so what true. I'm on there for. Um, all right, so your first time as a model, your first time shooting. Okay. Is, is it, I have to actually think back. Yes. It wasn't that long ago. It was, what, 12 years ago. All right, well, it's a, it's a much longer time if I think back to when I was 14. Yeah. But going in, did you really know what to expect? Had you done any sort of due diligence of what? No, on? not well, no, I, I kind of... You have this false impression of what being a model is. Oh, it's glamorous or... I don't know. I don't even know if I... I don't really want to shoot myself in the foot and say that that's what I thought it was going to be because I also liked the idea of just having an, a professional image. I thought it was quite cool. Yeah. Uh, so I was motivated by the outcome and the process before that was the uncomfortable bit because, yep. you know, I'm 14. I'm not necessarily an extrovert. I was kind of just like, oh, sh crap. I'm now going to have to go and model. Right. Um, but I was lucky in the sense that the photographers I worked with were all quite friendly and helped me with it. But the only thing I can remember doing a lot is like trying to emulate or co copy poses from magazines and things. Right. 
that was just a practical way of like approaching it. It was, was like, it I like the clue look at the pose, doing. look at yourself in the mirror, trying to emulate yeah, try it kind and, of thing. Yeah, because you're awkward. Like when you've never modeled before and then you go in front of a camera, it's not a natural It's a bizarre thing. job when you take into account you've never seen yourself. Like you can only yeah. look at yourself as a picture or a yeah, reflection. Yeah, yeah, And like you can never get outside of your face, can you? So you don't no. really have a conception of what you look like. So I found that really interesting and difficult. Like then seeing my, you know, my visual image like by different photographers. I was yeah. like, what well, What do I look like? Like, I, is, you know. is that something that really changed then? Your own sort of self-impression? Um, because obviously that age is already really I, impressionable. Yeah, and I think I became more aware of the things I didn't like about my face. Like more, yeah. like definitely more aware. And then uh, along the way as well, you have experiences with photographers. Maybe they'd point something out like, oh, okay. I remember one photographer um, had a go at me because I had a dimple on my shoulder. And I was like, well, I can't really do anything about that. And thanks for now making me more conscious of yeah. it. Like... If you but, could just try and not have a dimple on your shoulder, that'd be yeah, great. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, but cheers. I did yeah. want to bring it up all day. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, I, I did. I think I became more self-conscious of myself, definitely. But my perception of my face didn't really change. I mean, there would be moments as well where I'd see an image and it was good in a sense that maybe there was a makeup artist there, the lighting was good. It's gone from a picture on an iPhone, uh, well, not on an iPhone, they went, didn't exist, but a, a camera to an actual professional picture. Yeah. So it was like, oh, wow, I didn't know I like... And I could look like that. I liked it. And so, so it's like, exciting. But you're like year 10 yeah, at school. Yeah, year 10. Yeah, year 10. So how how did you tell people at school what you were doing? Um, I don't think I... Because year 10 was horrible for me. I thought yeah. everyone was horrible in year 10. I, I had the opposite. I really didn't... You were just really popular. Well, no, I wasn't. I, well, when I first started school, no, not at all. Like, right. I should show you a picture of when I was in year seven, like ginger, pale glasses. That's super racist. Absolutely. No, no well, I know, <laughs> but like, come on, I was a target. I didn't have a bullied, but I was never one of the cool kids. And like, without, this is going to sound really arrogant, but it's not, but like, I was quite smart. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I wasn't cool by any, by any definition of, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it so was So did you tell hard. people at school though? Did you, was well, there anyone that you told well, that you were going to try modeling? I told, I told a few of my close friends that that's what I was doing. And I think whatever platform I was on, I think it must've been Facebook. I think I put a few pictures up of me modeling and I got a good response from it, but no, it's not something I would act like, um, what's the word boast about or mm. actively want to tell people put in their faces. Cause I felt quite awkward about it at the time. It was only as I'd gone on doing it over the years that I felt more like indifferent to it and okay to like share it more. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I wasn't. Is, I, is there a separate threshold though from you go in to do the shoot? Yeah. Like there's, there's that fear of actually the, the, the performance of being on the shoot. Yeah. But then displaying the effort. So when you post the photos publicly or you show the photos, mm -hmm. is that another kind of wall you've got to get through in terms um, of nerves? Or were you just like, here they are? Yeah, I never actually, and I never really thought about that before, but no, I never had a hesitation in sharing them. But I also really only had a limited amount of people that I could share things to online. Okay. Um, and most, and mostly where I would share that kind of content would be on a site, like an industry site, like Model Mayhem or whatever was around at the time. So it was a relevant audience anyway. Yeah. And then the people that did see them outside of that knew me, so knew I wasn't vain. Because there's that assumption that, oh, you're modelling, you, you you either want to be famous or you're modelling because you're thick or you're arrogant, you know. <laughs> yeah, but that's a stereotype. Yeah, yeah. Even to this day, I battle with that. But yeah, but yeah no, I didn't really. The, the, it's like the stereotype about photographers, mm -hmm. like antisocial nature of photographers <laughs> or the weird nature of photographers. Yeah. I hate the stereotype. But then you meet some people... And you're like, oh, I can kind of see why the stereotypes They fit there. the stereotype, they yeah. a little bit. Yeah. And it's the same for me as a model because I'll go to a casting and like there's always one or seven that I just sat <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even joking, that sat there like pouting, like you walk in to sign your name on the sheet, like gives you a dirty look or you know the people that like the sound of their own voice, they'll yeah. start talking, oh, I just did a shoot for blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh, God, like, yeah. but, but they let, they, they let other people down. Like there is the stereotype, but they probably work for, I don't know, super big brands. They work like once a month, get like four or 5,000 pounds for it. And they've got this inflated sense that, you know, they're amazing. Well, you're, kind of, you're kind of touching on something there. So I'd be quite interested to know what you think. I get the impression that a lot of what's put out by models of, of what they've done or what they're up to is mm -hmm. fake. There's a yeah. lot of. Uh, projected nonsense like they say oh I've got a big campaign I've got this going on yeah I mean, but there isn't one they just 
they're just sort of making themselves look busy? Probably because there's, there's a select few that are working in industry like week in, week out for good brands. Like fashion models tend to, to be doing that more so than commercial models, but there's a shelf life on it. But commercially, like think how many people look like me or similar to me. We're all going for the same job. Uh, you get into the casting, that's great to even be there in the first place. But then, you know, it's very unlikely that you're going to, the ratio The ratio is very low, basically. You'll get one to, say, 30 castings that you go to. Right. No, nobody's doing highly paid work week in, week out. It doesn't work like that. No. Like, there's it, too many from people. From my experience, anyway. And, and there's the obvious, like, the repetition of the same face in different brands. They wouldn't want that. They'd want their yeah, own face. Yeah, of course. You could be busy in a freelancer sense, like a, like you could be constantly getting bookings and you might be working for a small brand. But the thing is, it's easy to post a picture and it, it could be of a professional nature as well, like behind the scenes on a shoot where there's eight people on set. But that doesn't mean you're being paid a lot of money. And I think a lot of people like like don't like, I don't know, they skip the part where they, they would speak about that. Whereas I'm quite open about the fact that I don't make loads of money. Right. Like... I'm obviously making a living and, and, and uh, enough to consider it as a full-time wage. Otherwise I wouldn't be doing it, but yeah. I'm not like minted. I don't pretend to be, I don't pretend that modeling's like as lucrative, like super lucrative. I'm living the life cause I'm not. It's a shame this is only audio cause people could see the fur coat and the, fe- <laughs> the gold, the gold chains around the, the neck. The cami and- from Primark that's got <laughs> bird crap on it. <laughs> so on the subject of like freelance versus agency. Yes. So you're currently signed? Yes. And you do freelance as well? Yeah. What's the differences in terms of the the getting of work and then the actual, the types of work that you get? Okay. So um, I guess freelancing, you, you can still work for brands, but they tend to be smaller brands. Um, and you'd usually find the work yourself on a casting site or they could approach you via a website or a, whatever platform you've got your portfolio on. But, you, but it also, there's an, also a, a second tier of freelancing where you could, I don't know, be in a community of photographers or models and say that you're a model or say that you're a photographer and you can work with people that aren't necessarily doing it in the industry itself. Like they're not working in the advertising industry, so they're doing it either as a hobby or for fun. So you can then market as a model, I can market myself as someone, you, you know, you can take pictures of me for a cost, like you can book me. Yeah. That's that's not reflective of the advertising industry itself. So like it's not, a, I say this in loosely like it's not a professional job in the sense that it's not it's, regulated yeah it's There's not it's not it's not regulated and it's not for for something specific it's just for whatever other reason it may be right and i know a lot of agency job models they wouldn't do that kind of work or they don't even know it exists but that, i came do you know what that's that's exactly what i wanted to hear yeah I okay i did not think you were going to go there but that's really it. one of the things that i've found from the last four years or whatever it is of where I've worked with agency models it's so funny explaining the internet world <laughs> to an agency model because it's <laughs> yeah it's like a horse book in a holiday blown. they just they don't they don't understand they it's not even the fact that they don't know it exists when you explain it, they don't understand how it can exist yeah like what even is this yeah yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's I'm really glad you said that that's actually really yeah and I'd probably be the same but it's just because I've because I've started in that in that world, in that area of the industry it, it, as such, it, I, I do have that awareness and I do rely on that for work or I, I know it's an avenue where I can get work from it and I enjoy it, whatever. But yeah, if you would, if your experience was just working for an agency and doing it commercially, you, you wouldn't even understand the, how it all works in the yeah. freelance side of things. Is it, I mean, I'm, I'm lucky that I understand it all because I've, I started that and then moved on to the agency stuff, but it is a very odd place. <laughs> yeah. And as far as the, the work that you get for brands that's freelance, yeah, is is that changing with the, the, the influencer side of things coming up? Is it more a case of them saying to you, will you just take like phone pictures of yourself doing or, or wearing something? Um, or is it still like you're getting called in for shoots in studios? I'm still, yeah, it's very much practically like going in for a shoot or video like the what you mentioned it does happen but it is more geared towards actual influencers that kind of had hundreds of thousands of followers and again that that content that they produce wouldn't then be wouldn't fill the void that they need to actually advertise things they'd still then commission a shoot for a model you know for, for, with a model from an agency for, for their like social media or their online advertising, they'd still do that. That's just an added part of their advertising. Do you think that's because there's a 
validation to a, like if you're so if you're online shopping yeah and you're looking at a company's website you're thinking not one you know but one you've been recommended or it's come up in a search mm-hmm. and you're looking at their site and their site is just full of phone pictures are you going to be like yeah i don't think i'm going to order from these guys this seems slightly off yeah I def- and there's a I validation to like the more professional photo well yeah and because it's i think people maybe think that the influence inside of it replaces a certain element of advertising, but it isn't. It's just another branch of how they can advertise. Right. And it's a very powerful way to do it, but there's still the need and demand for just plain old advertising, like, you know, the stills and the video that are on a commercial or in a magazine. I mean, my favourite influencing side of things was the tea. When they had that big rush of like fit tea and all the teas that you'd find like an 18 year old that had like a 2% body fat yeah, going yeah. on. Like, I and know they, exactly they hold up their, their box of tea and they're like, oh, I've been drinking this and I've lost so much weight. And you're like, yeah, I crazy. don't think you were big at any point. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you've lost any weight. And if you had, it's probably water weight out of your ass because exactly, it but, just makes you ill. But they've also, I think it's, that's, that's an interesting thing because they've they made it a thing, I think last year or the year before where they, you actually have to put now if you're being paid, paid to sponsor. Yeah, yeah, you can't just give the impression that, you know, you, you might you might have actually done this, pro- used this product or done a trial yeah. of it. You have to make it explicitly clear. I'm just doing this, to, you know, for the sake of their advertising. Yeah. Which is good. I mean, it makes sense actually because they're like a younger audience might be like oh and it's actually you're just being deceived which, are, which, you, which on an industry that's not modeling but again i'm sorry to keep going back to it but on no, the yeah, on the influencer cool. side of things it's a very thin bit of ice they're standing on purely from the point of view of it's a lot of fakery and lots of people talking about not being fake yeah. so it's a very tenuous position to be in and then you have someone come out with a rule that says you've got to be honest about this yeah <laughs> then people can look really stupid where they've said oh no i'm i'm not i'm not being paid to say it i just really like it. and then all of a sudden they go, yeah i was actually yeah, yeah of course it's 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 uncomfortable isn't it for them which is quite funny to watch but again it's 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 also mean though because they're probably making a viable living from it or something i don't i don't know how it works i'm not part of that world i'm not buying that companies that are selling screen printed t-shirts out of a garage have got that much money to be paying girls (laughs) yeah the millions that they're supposedly but this is the thing i know people that would like you know you'll get a message like you say you've got xyz amount of followers a brand will be like oh do you want something for free you just need to post a picture of it like i've been asked to do that but it's like well no because i'd never use that product and i don't want it so i'm not gonna post about something i I just don't see just because it's free people know what yeah there you go that's the bit that people People always are like, oh, it's a free thing. Yeah, but did get, you want the thing yeah, in the first place? Yeah, they don't actually question it. Like, I have, I have had this happen to me once before, and I said yes because it was like a two, three hundred pound watch. I was like, yeah, damn right, I'll take a picture of it. And I actually really like the watch, so I felt consistent with taking a picture and advertising it. But if someone said to me, what, you know, had they asked you to do that, yeah. I'd be like, yeah, okay. I, so- I wouldn't be like, no. Like, because it's not uncomfortable to just admit, yeah, I want, I'm not going to say no to a free watch. Well, I just don't think there's ever been a time in the past <laughs> that, I like. that I can think of where you've had companies chasing individuals with no professional setup mm. and saying, "Can we give you something for free that you know, don't that you don't want?" Yeah, <laughs> and people would be like, "Oh, yeah." I know, but that's just the power of the internet, isn't it? Like, people get roped in into things. The danger of without the internet. thinking about, yeah, the danger. Yeah. So, speaking of dangers on the internet, have you how how is your photographic experience been in your modeling career have you had many sort of negative experiences to positive what's the ratio I've, like i've honestly been really lucky and had really good experiences but i've had a, a few bad ones which i'll come to in a minute but predominantly i think the reason why i've had good experiences is because i'm very regimented with the way that I access work like I, I only work to certain level so i eliminate certain situations automatically yeah without that may sound harsh but it's just a fact yeah um, well, if I walk out of a Russian bar, not nothing against Russia, but if I walk out of a, a bar in sort of deep, dark Russia at two in the morning, counting my money in front of everybody, there's a chance someone's going to hit me with a bottle and take my money. <laughs> yeah. I think it's not a case of the, the dangerous phrase that is constantly brought up these days of like asking for it. Yeah. But there are situations you can see being more dangerous or more, well, you're, you're just, more you, vulnerable. You're definitely going to be more prone to certain situations. Yeah. Like, isn't there's no real emotion attached to that. That's just the way it is. And I, you can't deny that. I think that the, the, it's unfortunate, but your the, you're asking for it argument that there's one part that no one seems to ever talk about. And I'm not talking about the, the extremities of that. I'm not, I'm not going down a political route here, but the idea of like 
you should you should be able to do whatever you want and no one should ever interfere with you for doing it great doesn't work in the real world because you're not accounting the bad people that exist or the motivations of people yeah and there's no responsibility in that no whatsoever. There, there is a, almost a self-responsibility of self-preservation to actually consider what a situation's like I think, and yeah, act accordingly you, you on paper like certain things shouldn't happen but to not concede that well this might happen so i need to actually acknowledge it yeah you know it comes down to that like the world's not just it doesn't mean it's right but you do need to be aware that you know you should you should do what you can to prevent certain situations from happening yeah. where where possible yeah preventative measures so let's yeah. talk about i don't want you to go into any anything you don't want to talk about but in mm-hmm. terms of negative experiences what, what have you had sort of what's um, been the issues honestly not nothing nothing massive i just thought there's been a few experiences when i was younger actually which makes it even more concerning where photographers have been trying to push my levels like oh, oh you Christ. should you should or like there was one time and my mum actually was really annoyed about it and rightly so i was at a photographer's house i can't even i couldn't even tell you the name even if i wanted to which i wouldn't but he i'm sure he took a photo as i was getting changed Oh, for Christ yeah, sense. and he like gave me gave me a box of chocolates when I left, and it was just all a bit creepy. And it was like, well, <laughs> yeah, it's like, but how could you do that? Like, it's just a, completely abusing someone's someone's trust, isn't it? And uh, it is just an isolated incident, but like to know that things like that can happen is concerning because you're the model's putting himself in a vulnerable position as much as a photographer. Yeah, especially like a male photographer working with a female photographer, it works both ways. Yeah, but like that that's why I've always been so clear about lines like it's it, it's as soon as they get blurred i don't know it just becomes a bit confusing yeah or not even confusing that's the wrong word but it's it should just in my opinion it should just be very not regimented because that takes the fun out of it but we're working together and that's a that is the focus of today's shoot yeah and that's that yeah um so yeah, I haven't had many to bring it back to your point i haven't had many bad experiences because i probably haven't allowed anything to happen yeah not that it would but I think I'm quite, I don't know, forceful in, in making sure the shoot's assertive, completely neutral. Assertive is a, a better word, I think. You're, uh, quite, you're quite assertive in the sense of, I don't get the impression in any communications we've had in the past that that I don't get called babes in a message. I don't get like <laughs> yeah. text it's speak. You come style. across very professionally. You want to know what the plan is, yeah. which is actually yeah. becoming a bit of a rarity, to be honest. Really? Unfortunately. Yeah. It's becoming... Uh, my personal, but and I'm really not a fan of that, like, informal talk in messages to the extent of it being like we're old mates. Mm-hmm. I, to me, it feels slightly, it was very disingenuous and it just feels slightly odd. Yeah. I no, don't I, talk to I, people I'm, I'm that I don't like know that. like that. So, Like, I really, like, when I come away from a shoot and I've, you know, met someone and we've really got on well and had a nice conversation, I actually really like that. I think that's amazing that that can happen and it brightens up your day. But I would then not operate from that oh we're friends or we're gonna start texting each other or something like that like a, that's an extreme way of putting it but that's what it comes down to I think if you're not clear about those distinct those those lines then things like that can happen and it's just I just don't understand it it's not for me like yeah. I, works work my personal life's my personal life exactly not to say I'm not open about my personal life and that I don't have fun or you know things like that but <laughs> Bringing it back to so your first impression of me, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's that's that that's the whole reason why I'm like that, really. But as Not far as your personal life goes, how how like so your your other half, how how are they about your job? My partner's actually really really understanding about it, but I think that's also because I I I only really do portraiture and fashion. I don't yeah. think he'd have an issue if I did anything else, but it, it, I can understand why it might be quite hard as a man to see your yeah. girlfriend. It, not that that you know every I think every girl's entitled to do that even if you've got a boyfriend or not but no he's really understanding um he likes it he's really proud of the work I do so he's always like oh he'll change his screensaver every week to a different picture that he likes <laughs> well every week like once every six months he's maybe. gonna change it now just to make sure when he hears this he'll change it <laughs> yeah <all> hopefully <laughs> but it's, it's hard because obviously he's got nine to five and I'm a freelancer but the longer we've been we've been together nearly four years now but he He's he's got into a habit now where he knows my work. He knows. Well, you were doing it seven eight years by the time that you got together. Then. Yeah. Well, I've been doing. I've been only been doing it for four and a half years full time. I see. So but he was pretty much there. Yeah. For that. So I I think I was in my first year of doing it full time when I met him. Right. So and he was a student. So we both kind of had a similar lifestyle. But then when he's he's gone into the structure of nine to five, like it's never been an issue that I have a different kind of 
working hours to him. If we make it work, it's he's just yeah. He we're both just quite laid back, so it's fine. Yeah. But I think if anything, like having two, if you had like to have two models or two self-employed people, it wouldn't work because we ground each other in different ways. Right. So it's down to your relationship, really. I think. Yeah. And I, I, that's that again. It's another of those things. It doesn't seem to get considered. You you said something earlier about it's you know it's everyone's right to do what they want to do. Like if a woman wants to do that, she has the right to go and do whatever she wants to go and do. Mm-hmm. And I agree massively to an extent mm-hmm. with either side. I think that if you've got a relationship where like if I'm doing something and it makes my wife uncomfortable, or if she's doing something that makes me uncomfortable mm-hmm. and that continues to cause a separation, we either have to consider what's we have to consider what's more important the thing yeah no i agree with like your freedom to do the thing or the relationship yeah like which and it, it's just important more. that you have the freedom to say the relationship can't hold me back from this or this can't hold me back from the relationship yeah well, it's an individual sort of thing it is and it's hard because it's subjective and like the two of you in a relationship might have a different opinion on it but ultimately realistically you would hope that you would have the same opinion on it attitude on it so that if if it ever did escalate into a position where one person wasn't happy with it or feeling uncomfortable then you would do something about it right like as in i think it's right that everyone do does what they want to do as long as they're not hurting anybody but equally be mindful of your partner's feelings yeah not to but then someone could someone could say oh don't do this and what they're doing is perfectly fine and not harming anyone it's the individual's right to weigh up the 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 conflict yeah like if i want to continue to photograph weddings yeah and jamila doesn't want me to do that i have to weigh up well which pursuit is more important to me as, a, as, a, as an individual. Um, yeah, of course. And then yeah. we make a decision based on that. Mm-hmm. When someone puts in a hard ultimatum, yeah, that's usually a good indicator that it's not a good situation, yeah. regardless. Yeah, I think so too. And you should have the freedom to, you know, tell people to fuck off, essentially. Yeah, definitely. Like, if, you know, if if Tim didn't like what I did for, for any reason, which he doesn't at all, he's absolutely fine with it, yeah. then I would tell him to fuck off. Like, right. it's my life, I'm not Don't doing anything. Sweat, oh, sorry, excuse <laughs> my French. <laughs> oh, she does have a personality. She, she, I never said you didn't have a personality. <laughs> no, That's... I'm joking, I'm joking. I know, I know. Um, I, so, I, I, okay, so something that I always find quite interesting, and I feel like this is where I'm going to ruin myself. Here, go on. But... <laughs> Models get asked to do quite a lot of weird stuff. Models get asked lots. to do quite a lot of weird stuff. Okay, like, yeah. Like on shoots, I've I uh, an agency shoot I did last week. I said to him, "What's you know, what's the weirdest thing you've ever had to do?" And he said, "I was doing a shoot. I think he said for a sports brand." Okay. And uh, he got to know the photographer, decided to work with the photographer again. Mm-hmm. And the second time he shot with a photographer, the guy said to him, "Do you mind if I paint you blue?" Oh no! And he's like, sorry, what? <laughs> and the guy was like, I just want to paint your face blue and oh, take no. a couple of photos. And he, okay. he didn't know what to do, so he's like, okay. Yeah, you kind of like panicking. That so situation. have you had any situations where you've had like a concept thrown at you, and you're just like, oh. Yeah, definitely. Like, and again, it's subjective, isn't it? What what looks good? So you're not always going to want to shoot the same thing. But it's annoying when like you've got a plan, and then say you turn up, and it's like, oh, and we're going to do this, and it's like, well. I might not necessarily want to put out an image of me looking like that or clothes. That's, I get it. Having, I I do understand having like a bank of clothes that you can use on shoots and stuff, but like you should at least ask the model, are you okay with wearing this then? Oh no, you're going to wear this. Especially if you've not informed them before you come to the shoot. Cause then it's like, crap, like I wouldn't wear this or I don't like it or I don't feel confident in it or I wouldn't want to put an image of me wearing something like this out there. So you're turning up and a photographer's got clothes yeah, for which, you. Which is works really well sometimes. Right. But like it's just the assumption that like because I'm paying you to model, like you will wear what I want you to wear. It's like it does it's not it's Yeah, not they quite sort of see you like as like that. a rented person. Yeah, it's like yeah. I don't know, it's just you would at least have that conversation beforehand, the same of like a concept, I guess. Like it's different. You know, when you're paying a model, you're shooting what you want to shoot. But you still have to have that conversation with the model, like what you sh- what it is you're expecting from the shoot, what you're shooting, not completely change the terms on the day because y- yeah. you might not want to be part of that or for whatever reason. So you've never been painted blue? I've never been painted blue, not for <sighs> you've me. You've got no personality. <laughs> and I've gone back a step here. Uh, and, and of the work that you've done, what, what stands out as the shoots that you've enjoyed the most or the photos that you enjoy the most? Like what's the oh. best shoots for you? I, I don't know. That's I'm a really hard right question. On yeah, the spot that's a there. really hard. No, it's hard to. I have to actually think. Like, I, I, I'd probably say, like, commercially, shoots can be really fun because there's a big budget and, like, sometimes you do really crazy, stupid things. Or, like, 
don't know. That's not really a good answer. I don't know. Shooting abroad's fun. So where have you shot then? Um, Seville in in Spain, Ibiza, Greece. Okay. And like, it's not necessarily glamorous. It's actually more stress than it's worth sometimes. But it's like, quite fast paced, right? Yeah, and like you don't get time necessarily to explore. And then it's all the planning, like you know, the practical, like getting your passport ready, getting everything packed. But like, it was it's fun. Just from a personal level, like, oh, I'm doing something abroad. This is cool. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm traveling. Well, I'm not traveling, but I'm doing something abroad because of work. It's I've a nice it, feeling. I've heard it can be quite frustrating in the sense that you could be taken somewhere that you really want to go, but because you're but then, literally there yeah, to do the job, you that, don't get to experience. That's the exactly place. my experience. When, when I went to Seville and Ibiza, that was for a company called Contiki. It's like um, a travel company. I think, I think for backpackers, they do like guided stuff holidays right. and trips. So we were just like doing the lifestyle shots where we're all a group of people eating seeing all the sights you're the cool one yeah well I don't know <laughs> <laughs> I was all in the corner stuffing my face and right. obviously you can't eat because they're going to shoot the food and I'm just like ah, I can't help myself <laughs> um, but yeah no 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 I, I can't even remember what I was going to say now sorry about going to the places and oh, not, right, not yeah. getting to experience sorry that's it, it. yeah so we had we had five days um, and we were shooting probably say from 8am to 7pm Christ yeah and it wasn't just me the whole time it was like group shots and then individual shots but all the walking the you know everything as a group like you need that extra time to manage it um and so yeah I don't have any time to like go out I was in Ibiza I couldn't go out like yeah. and turn up the next day like hungover or tired I can't I just can't do that I'm sure there's some people that would there's some people that would definitely yeah. but I can't do it I'm not hardcore um at all like I, I love a party like the next person but I can't do that like I, it shows in my face I can't hide like I can't turn up to a shoot hungover like, you can tell what are you hungover now no <laughs> <laughs> definitely not <laughs> but you've worked with uh, quite a few photographers that I'm quite a big fan have you worked with Jake Hicks I'm sure yes, you have. I have a few years ago, but yes. Because he's someone that um, I've watched his tutorials mm -hmm. and I've spoken to loads of people. I mean, he's only up the road, I think, from here. I think he's in Reading. Yeah, so it's like 20 minutes up the road. Is it? From yeah. Okay. Um, and I've, I've, I've heard so many things about the way he shoots that you have these really dynamic, bright, colourful, vibrant images, are really crazy, lights all over the place. Yeah. But the meticulousness of the build-up means the shoot absolutely doesn't match the feel of the photo but i don't know if that was your experience because uh in terms of so like if you so what a lot of people get wrong i think with photography uh, there's okay here's a really good stereotype mm -hmm. when i talk to guys who aren't in the industry and they ask what i do and if i mention that i work with models mm -hmm. the instant thing they go to is how it must be like that oh kind yeah, of there's job. something you know that dodgy kind, about this. There's, or... there's, there's, there, oh, it must be so cool to hang around with um, models, and oh there must gosh. be that side of things. Goodness, yeah. And that's a stupid stereotype because it's incredibly it's a the opposite. Stereotype, yeah. Most of the time, no offense, and I'm sure it's the same on both ends for this discussion. Most of the time, it's boring mm -hmm. because definitely, especially <laughs> for like work, work, it's more about results than it is the actual shoot. Yeah, nobody cares. We're all here to do a job. Like, exactly. So the, the most exciting thing that can probably happen is someone says something political and starts an argument. But other than that, you've got nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's just you go through the motions, you shoot, you try and make it fun and whatnot. Yeah, of it's course. not the hardest job in the world, but you try and have fun with it. Yeah, uh, but people have the impression that it's different. Yeah, that I don't know. Yeah, like. I think some people see a photographer's work and see like, like Jake is a really good example because his work is loads of colors and gels and, you know, you've got, he uses like the, the tilt shift lenses and the lens babies and whatnot. So there's all this sort of dynamic um, influence going into the photo. But mm -hmm. I've heard that the actual shoot is quite meticulous. Mm -hmm. So it's just quite a regimented system where it's like once the lights are all in place, it's like go time, we're getting the photos and then we're done. There's, yeah. It's not like a crazy wild party. And no, it's definitely fun. not. A hundred percent. It's a method, isn't there, that you, yeah. you follow through and you achieve your goal. Great. That's that's ultimately what it is. And yeah, the, my experience is the same. And like with, with, with most like kind of professional photographers or photographers that know what they're doing or they want a specific look, it is like that. Yeah. Because it's, well, how do I achieve this? And then you execute it. And that's that and like you don't actually shoot that much because what the, the the time is in setting the things up yeah. and then you take like you you shoot yourself a handful of photos and you've got what you need yeah like yeah that's my experience definitely well i remember reading years ago so i spent a, i spent a year out from life and i i wanted to go and formally learn audio engineering mm -hmm. there is a point to this i promise this isn't just like when your granddad <laughs> starts telling a story Goodness. 
Um, and I remember reading about um, the the power of the the point that you sort of select the thing that you want to make into the mix of a song. Mm -hmm. So if you have someone play a guitar solo, yeah. for example, is the example they used, or a vocal take, if it's someone singing a song, if you have them sing the song a hundred times, the hundredth one will be the most technically accurate, but the least emotionally interesting. Okay, yeah. Because someone will have just gone through the motions 99 other times. Mm -hmm. And at that point, they are just being technically correct. Yeah. But the sixth one might be incredibly haphazard technically, but will have loads of emotional investment. Yeah. And I think psychologically there's something to people that once you go past the point of taking so many photos of someone or getting someone to sing a song so many times mm -hmm. or perform anything, after a certain number of times, we just lose interest. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think a smaller number of photos in a shoot per set is better. Yeah. Because I'm actually then focused in when you're focused in. Of course, yeah. I mean, it's it's not rocket science, is it? If you keep shooting a model uh, consistently for over however many times, especially if it's the same shot, like my brain's going to go elsewhere eventually. Yeah. And like physically as well, like I'm not maybe going to be as present as much. And it might be a be something as subtle as I might move my shoulder slightly because I'm consciously thinking about doing it. Whereas you know, I have 50 shots in, I might just not be giving my best self. Right. But I don't even think you can help that because it's not even a lack of concentration. It's just you do, I don't know, physically and emotionally switch off a bit with repetition. There's a limit to what yeah. you can stay switched on to. Yeah. I mean, like on all the commercial shoots I've done, it is literally... I don't know, sitting around for hours and then for hours they're setting up and then you're on set for maybe 10 minutes, that's it. So you do loads of commercial stuff. You do like lifestyle-y type commercial stuff I've seen as well. Yeah. I have a question, very serious one. Mm -hmm. I'm not joking at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> How do you look like you're actually smiling? Um, What's the trick when you sat there for hours and you've got to do this shot that's supposed to be like a candid, laughy, smiley yeah, thing? Yeah, it's really hard. What's the What's the trick? I don't know, I've just gotten so good at doing it. And like, if you speak to any commercial model, they're, they're, they're the same. You kind of just do it without thinking about, like you nail the fake laugh. Right. You nail it. Do you it. have a fake laugh? I do. Can we hear it? Well, no, it's because it's not the audio. That, but that's, I, 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 look, oh, I have a fake, vi I mean, like, okay, let me rephrase that. This is that. for educational purposes, <laughs> a fake, okay? A fake visual laugh. Like I don't even I, necessarily. Do you not even laugh? But sometimes I don't even make a I noise. I feel like all your photos are a lie now. <laughs> but the thing is, half the time, like you're in a with lifestyle stuff, you're like either in a group setting mm -hmm. or I don't know you've got people around you interacting with you, so you are actually having fun with it. Like I actually like my job, so I am probably genuinely like trying to. I'm trying to like make sure my emotion does look genuine, so I am trying to genuinely smile. Yeah. But I mean, eight hours in, sometimes you know it, it is obviously going to be fake for the purpose of the image. But as a model, if you want to be good at what you're doing, you will still try and make it look real. So you still try and go through the motions of actually smiling. But you, you do you you do after a few years of doing stuff like that consistently, like can do it like with a click of your, your fingers. Right. So. Is it something that you think that it's a photographer's responsibility to kind of? create that mood that he's trying to create in the photos so if he wants you to like have a laughy smiley yeah sort of shot he can't just be silent and just Definitely. taking photos yeah 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 and like all all the photographers that do like commercial work and advertising like they are usually really like people that just like nice to be around which is probably why they do so well because yeah. they you can't just stand there matter of fact be like right okay all laugh and have fun there's usually someone they're like being like, all right, or crack a joke, or we'll make, make lightheartedness of it, which helps. So yeah, but I'd just, say there is just a like a really small amount of heroin. Yeah, yeah, all just, that just keeps things going, you know, <laughs> keeps the energy up. But especially if you're shooting all day, like say it's for a big brand or commercial, and you've been on set for twelve hours, you got up at four a.m. to get there for five a.m. Like, and you're absolutely shattered. Like, you do need someone there to like keep the mood up a bit. And like you want to be looked after properly as well. Like I just mean in the sense of like making sure that they are feeding you and giving you water and things like that. So yeah, there is a responsibility because the whole shoot ultimately comes down to you and the director slash the, the photographer, doesn't it? Yeah. So it's it's, a, it's two ways. So w what I've always said when it comes to working, if you're a photographer that hires a model and you're taking pictures of a model and it's just you and the model, or it's you, the model and the makeup artist, mm -hmm. you, the model, the makeup artist and the stylist, mm -hmm. you, the model, makeup artist, and you build a build a build a team around it. Yeah. What it ultimately always comes back to is the person pushing the button and the person in front of the camera. Uh, yeah, it does. Exactly. How their re relationship is working can disregard everything else involved it, it, if it doesn't work it doesn't work yeah nine times out of ten it does but 
But on on a, on a larger shoot where there are that many people involved, sometimes the noise of that those people can interfere with the relationship between you and a photographer because there's a hierarchy. Like there's someone telling someone else off. There's maybe two people on set, the stylist or the someone from the brand, someone from the advertising agency. They don't agree on what's right. So they actually make the photographer and the model feel pressure. That can affect the dynamic. But ultimately, yeah, it does come down to the photographer. Is that something you've seen a lot of? Yeah, all the time. Like with yeah. bigger brands when, you know, there's more at stake because they're spending so much money to do whatever they're shooting. Then there, there is, there's all, it's always when the client comes. Like the photographer and the director and whoever works from the agency filming it or shooting it or the freelance photographer, whoever, they're fine with the model. They establish their own accord with them. But it's the, it's the client that will then put the pressure on because they want to be able to take back whatever the content they get and be like, well, this is what you asked me to get. We've got it. There's yeah. nowhere, there's no necessary, there's less room for like being more flexible and going with the flow because you're, you're against the clock. You, there's a certain amount of people in power that, of the shoot that need to be happy. And that, that's happened to me loads of times where I've been booked, done like a commercial shoot or video for something. And then it's just never got used because oh, okay. somewhere, someone above the people who made that happen isn't happy. They're like, nah, it's not good enough. Sling it. Wow. Because, yeah, it's, it's, it's strange. Is that it, frustrating or are you just happy you've got paid? Well, ultimately, I'm just happy I've got paid. But it is annoying when, like, you, you know, you're excited about seeing the outcome. Right. Like, especially if you do like a cool, cool, I don't know, cool branded video or something. You're like, it's good, one good for your, for your portfolio. And two, you want to see it because you put all that effort into yeah. it. But yeah, you get over it quite quickly. Okay. So uh, in terms of like the brands that you've worked for, what, which one's been the most exciting for you? Hmm. Garnier was quite cool. Oh, wow. It wasn't anything massive. It was just, I did some like clips for their social media. Right. Um. So it was just me like in a, in like a robe and my hair was wet. It's so, like me coming out of a bath and I'm just like opening a product and smiling. Like that was just fun because probably because of the nature of it. It was like for Instagram, so it was like short, fun clips and yeah. the, the pressure wasn't there, but I was still part of like a a well thought of set and shoot. Like everything was there. Like it was a cool background, cool set. Do you get like freebies? No, that's oh. a myth. I mean, occasionally you do, but it's... You shattered my expectations. You 90% of the time don't get anything. 90% of the time. I mean, maybe in the fashion world you do. I don't really know how that works, but yeah, no. This is why I, I have rarely. the setup that I have the way I shoot. Yeah. Now that we have Chica, she's like the freebie that you get a shoot that has a chihuahua <laughs> on there. Yeah, to be fair, I was so happy one, when right? I saw her. Oh. Um, okay, so in terms of like looking back over, you said you started, what, 12 years ago? Like your first shoot. Yeah, yeah. In terms of years, sort yeah. of the evolution of the job that you've had, mm -hmm. do you feel like what a model is perceived as has changed since you started? Um, yeah, probably, probably in the sense that people think it's, it's still, there's still the stereotype that it's like glamorous and that, I don't know, you're not mess necessarily inputting much, but then like, so that, that, that old stereotype that I mentioned earlier, like, oh, she must be an airhead or right. eager for attention or fame or whatever's there. But it's more, I think it's more, people are more used to the concept of a model yeah, I still think there's that air of mystery to it, but it's more. I think people receive it a little bit better because. I, I do you know what I think. I think a lot of people don't ask enough questions. Yeah, in this day and age, I think people try too hard to look like they know something. Everyone's scared to look like they don't know. Yeah, one of the reasons I started doing the podcast is actually I'm just really interested in what other people have done and mm -hmm. and and what other worlds look like because I'll only ever see things from the way that I do them, and you'll have done shoots for brands I'll never work for or you'll you'll work with people in a way that I'll never see it yeah and it's just interesting to hear other people's perspectives and I think people don't do that enough mm -hmm. and they could actually not just like learn like you could learn to tolerate or you could learn to like but just generally like open up your mind to what else is going on in the world because it's mm -hmm. really fascinating I like I've spent the last six months trying to get my head around this influencer thing still cannot make heads or tails of why it exists but it exists. But yeah. by asking questions, I'm learning more. Yeah. That's the one thing I'd say. You're going to be the perfect person to ask this to. Okay. Because you've had so much experience in, in the, the real world. Of modeling. <laughs> the real world. 
If you're a new photographer or if you're someone that's just starting to work with models, yeah. how, how does a new photographer kind of get the most out of working with an experienced model like yourself? A new photographer as in someone that's not got any experience or new to... They know what they're doing with their camera, but they're new with working with people. Okay. Photographing people. Okay. Um, I guess maybe uh, like ask, maybe you could just pick, pick our brains. Um, or I think... I think just coming to it with a relaxed attitude and not not getting nervous, not stressing yourself out, because I think a lot of people think, oh, okay, she's experienced, she's going to be this, like this, or like that, and it's not actually the case. Yeah, like you can still treat it as how you would any any of your other photography, like you're learning something. So I don't know, it's, it's a really hard question because I'd I'd like to think I could try and offer something to someone in that in that position but I wouldn't know how to like clarify what that is yeah um I don't know you'd obviously have to want to be do- shooting people and not just doing it for the sake of it otherwise it wouldn't work yeah but, but does just you, enjoy but does it. your demeanor change if you know someone's new yeah. are you a different person in the way I'm you probably, show yourself I try I wouldn't say I compensate but I do try and make them feel comfortable yeah. more so than just like maybe I can take a step back and relax a bit more I still relax, but I'd hate the thought of someone being nervous or like have to act a certain way. So I would try, I would try harder, like emotionally to interact with someone. Yeah. Definitely. But yeah, I guess that's the only thing I'd do differently. It's just sort of your demeanor with the person. Yeah. I'd just be more It's one of those things when I first started photography, my, well, my, my first time photographing a model was in Kingston. Okay. Yeah. And a town where I grew up, I absolutely love Kingston. Every time I go back there, you get the feels. It's, It's my place. And um, I booked, I have no idea why. And it, it's just a very bizarre thing. I booked a goth. <laughs> I cannot okay. even begin to tell you why. I think it was because they were the only person that actually responded to my okay, like, it's just request the way it, it if there happens. was anyone available. Yeah. So we met up in Kingston. We shot for two hours. Mm-hmm. It was honestly the most awkward two hours of my life. Well, yeah, it must be scary. Yeah. And, and I have this complex i think like a lot of people do especially a lot of men mm-hmm. where you have to look like you know what you're doing even when you don't okay yeah and that's exactly what i just said don't feel yeah. like you have to do that and that's exactly what i did but what i did do that was i was very clever and i've done this pretty much ever since mm-hmm. and it's probably the reason that we're doing this right now mm-hmm. is i ask a lot of questions mm-hmm. because um when i work with like wedding couples i'm looking for buttons Mm -hmm. so I can get certain reactions because people, it's better to get real reactions out of people. So I'm looking for sort of triggers, conversations that you can have. If they talk about their dog, I can talk about my dog. Yeah, their face might light up or... Yeah, so you're you're looking for what what kind of works. I've always been inquisitive, but this first shoot, I remember, um, so I don't think I've ever told this story on a podcast and I'm probably not supposed to, but I'm going to. (laughs) Okay. So uh, I said the same question I ask almost everyone on the shoot, which is what's the worst thing that's ever happened to you on a photo shoot? Mm -hmm. I'm learning how dangerous the question that is in light of the Me Too movement. (laughs) Yeah. I didn't realise the world was what it was. I was a very naive child Mm -hmm. at 25. (laughs) 25. Um, So I asked this this young lady what, I think she's the same age as me, but let's say young lady because I was young at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, what the worst thing had ever happened. And she said to me that she had done a photo shoot for a guy who is involved in the tattooed girl community, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the shoot, she was really excited to see the pictures. And he said, for you to, I'm going to really paraphrase this. I really need you to understand that this is not what he said, but make it worse in your head. Okay, along the lines, yeah. He said, if you want to have access to see the pictures... You have to do something to me. What? Did you see what I'm where I'm going? Yeah, right? of course. That was. And I said, I said pretty much in the same tone of voice. Whoa. Yeah. That's what does shocking. that mean? Like what? Like what did you like? Did you phone the police? Did you hit him with a nut? Like what did you do? Like. <laughs> yeah. And she nice. and she said, "Well, I'll tell you what. The second time I shot with him, and I was like, what? 'I'm done. I'm done. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. good. I don't need to know any more details. I'm fine. Let's just let's not. You would just a- avoid someone like that, like the plague. You'd think. Well. But, but but then it's it's easy to to judge someone in that situation. But like it was very easy maybe for they're me to just judge them. maybe they don't have the this. Oh, that sounds really awful. They don't have the capacity to think like that. Some people are quite naive, aren't they? I think if you take it on a slightly deeper level, that would be a horrible experience. Let's say they were naive and this person took advantage of them, and that's really horrible. Yeah. And then you look back at it three. I think it was three years in the past for her at that point. Mm-hmm. You're now telling a stranger 
that that's how you reacted to that situation, that might be the bit you want to adjust. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I would adjust the story and maybe consider who I'm telling it to. Yeah, yeah. That was the weirdest part for me. No, it and is, that scared it, me really it is, badly. It is odd. Yeah, but it, it must be scary as a male as well. Like in, well, well, I don't want to reduce it down to gender, but like to know that, I don't know, just the 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 power is in the female in some, in some situations with, with how they perceive a situation or what they relay. Obviously, he was the wrong in, in that situation, yeah. but it's, it's dangerous, isn't it? It's a weird dynamic. That's <laughs> That's been the hardest part to get used to, and I'm really fortunate. I've yeah. got a very supportive wife who's involved in what I'm doing, so she sees my work. And yeah, and works. knows that there's nothing strange going on, which is what exactly. a lot of people assume. Yeah, and, and I think she's had probably... a a fair few more conversations than she'll ever admit to me with people who are like, you let your husband do that? You let your, like, because they have that <laughs> preconceived idea. That's the hardest part to me is understanding like the dynamic where that stereotype can be true. Yeah. That's the part I All can't. stereotypes can be true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's super bad. You shouldn't say things like that. <laughs> but, it, but it is Here true. Here comes the hate mob. I mean, I mean, it's They're usually tr- there for, uh, Stereotypes are usually there for a well, reason. There's always an element of truth to them. Like, obviously... Stereotypes are, are awful in essence, but there's there's always got to be someone that fits the stereotype. Unfortunately, yeah, it's, um, it's there's a there's a page I follow on Facebook because I'm a hundred years old, <laughs> and it's called I think it's called Very British Problems, and basically it just constantly references the fact that all the British people ever talk about is either how we're bad at stuff, mm-hmm. the weather. We can't cope with it being warm. We can't cope with it. And it's like, that's all really accurate. It's true, yeah. Like every conversation I have <laughs> at a wedding where someone's like, oh, hi, we don't know each other, but we're going to have a five-minute conversation. It's like, we have to talk about the weather. Yeah. We have to talk about like, oh, we're going to get a day off and get some sunny weather. That's kind of, And <laughs> stereotypes can be really true. It's just it's very sad that the photographic one seems to be in some cases. Mm. All right, so... Um, we're pretty close to being done. Are you you were quite nervous about this, I think. Um, I was less nervous and more kind of apprehensive because I don't know. I, I the, the idea of just having your opinions being recorded probably is quite a daunting concept. And I can edit them as well. Yeah. Which is good. Oh gosh, don't don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's not something I really have done before. So it's yeah, it's it's new. It's like oh, I don't know what to expect. But so uh, you fun. said something earlier about going to. Uh, like castings and seeing lots of people that look like you. Well, I do, it, it have was, you ever seen someone that really looks like you, where it almost feels a bit weird? No, I haven't. Because you're like, quite distinct looking. I don't think you're. I don't think I am, but thank you. I'll take that. I don't know. It's weird. Again, I don't really know what, what I look like. That sounds strange, but I no, don't actually I, know. No what one I look does. Like. No yeah. one knows what they look like. Yeah, really. but no, I don't know. But I don't know what. I think. I think more that you know, if there's a brief, your agency are going to send everybody that fits the brief. So we're all the same type of look. We may not look exactly the same, but yeah, we're all we're all got red hair, similar height, or whatever that kind of thing. But that's just as saturated as is the point. Like, there's so many people that there's just so many have the people. same look. Yeah, going for so the same people. job. Yeah, well, there's just too there's many. A, there's an actor I've worked with a few times, um, and he did when I did the old run of podcasts. He actually was on there, mm-hmm. um, and he's a really really funny guy, really cool guy. He won't come and do a second one because he's being a child about it but he should do (laughs) but he often posts pictures where he's gone to a casting and he's got ginger shoulder length hair and a beard okay and he'll turn up at a casting and he's literally like filmed the room and it just looks like there's like 40 of him sat in the room yeah it's so funny but that's what i mean like because they're 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 getting you to come in to audition you to a brief so you are all going to have similar characteristics you might you might obviously there'll be variation but it does feel like that sometimes especially if you fit a niche like he's got red hair yeah like he's yeah well I always make the joke with him that because he just looks like a bumpkin <laughs> that every film he's going to be in he's going to play the villager okay he just always looks like, so yeah. he'd be in like Terminator and they'd have to find a way to get the villager in it or something yeah so do you find like the modelling community generally quite supportive in terms of when you have a problem do you have like a network of people you can actually approach and ask for help or within, within do you mean like the freelancing side or the agency either is there, um, is there a big difference well, I'd say the freelancing side, I don't really have much to do with. Like, I don't really engage with, like, uh, what they call the, the threads and things like that. Yeah. I just, the I forum d- stuff. Yeah, I don't really, ha- I don't really know the what drama. that is. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't get involved with any of that. I don't really, not in a horrible way, I don't really care. No. Like, it's, it's all bollocks anyway. But it's just, I don't, I, don't, I don't really understand it. And yeah, I just don't, I, I, I log on to, to sites like Purple Port as a means to an end. I do find a job, 
talk to someone that's it yeah I, I, maybe there's a place for it for other people but yeah I don't get it so that so no that that no, I don't have anything to do with and I don't really know many models in the industry, in that side of the industry as well there's this assumption that all models know everyone and that's yeah. not true so yeah no from that side of things definitely not and with the more commercial agency stuff yeah you you share in the frustrations of the job and like the the nature of the industry and being self-employed and all the things that come with that and then there's also like a union called equity that um make sure you get paid and you don't get messed around so yeah but because that's an issue right that's actually like yeah i've heard this with several agencies it's very much an issue where there's sort of money withholding and yeah. chasing, chasing for stuff that you've done. Definitely, and it's usually it's usually the clients that haven't paid, and then the agencies get a bad rep because they can't pay you because they've not been paid. Yeah, but it still doesn't help you when you're like six months and you haven't been paid for a job that you've done. Yeah, the agency's really need. not waiting to pay rent on yeah. that one page. And like, they, yeah. sometimes it's a case they don't want to piss off the client because they need their work. But it's like, well, you're my agency for a reason to like enforce things like this. But that's why it's good to have equity because it's like, you know, no matter what happens, if someone's not paid you, you can go there and they'll sort it out. Like yeah. within the price of being with them, which isn't very much, they can like then legally, I mean, I mean I'm I'm doing something with them at the moment. It was only like a 300 pound job, but they've just like not paid me or someone else who I did the shoot with. Um, and this was like four months ago. They're ignoring all our emails. They've deleted their accounts. The numbers not up. No one's answering the numbers. And it's like it's just shocking. So yeah, yeah they're taking them to court at the moment. Oh wow! They're just sorting it all, all out for me. And I know I'll get paid the money, but it's annoying that I have to you have to do that. Yeah. But to know that you've got that as like a, a crutch is is amazing. I didn't. You know, I've I've done this for six and a half years. I've been photographing people, and I didn't know that there was an, uh, a union. Okay. So I'm probably make the assumption that there's a lot of people that don't know there's a union yeah uh, this, so that's yeah. probably the best thing that we can take from this oh is i to hope so because i tell all the models that i meet that you, you can be with equity but so how do you find them is that they have a website i guess yeah you just web, and then you sign up i think it's, it's like a membership plan i think you think depending on how much you earn it's, it's a different price but it's not much it, well, I, pay, I pay like 180 a year i think it's, no, not, okay. it's pretty it's good roughly but yeah I, I actually when i had a case um last year quite a big one where i didn't get paid a lot of money they they actually said to me the person who was dealing with my case was like oh yeah can you actually tell other models because nobody knows that we actually represent models right. they mostly represent actors but they've got a section for models as well dancers performing it's all, all those kind of you know people in the industry in general so I tell everyone because it's like well oh you should get equity on their case and they're like what what's equity well it's quite a disjointed industry because you've got like you said you've got brand which is its own leg mm -hmm. and then you've got agency which is its own leg and then you're part of the agency but the agency can't do anything about the brand and it becomes very yeah, disconnected it's, yeah so it's great to have some kind of support mm. because there are there are points i mean i've heard i can't, obviously can't name them because mm -hmm. i get in a lot of legal trouble but i do know of at least three considered to be major brand uh, major agencies mm -hmm. that have horrendous histories of Oh yeah, it's in the post. It's on its yeah. way. Yeah, and they like I, I've I've literally caught out absolute lies, and like I, obviously I can't name things as well. But um, Equity, when they were dealing with a case for me where I didn't get paid, they'd actually come back and said, "Well, would you be part of a, a class action because this is you, you're one of hundreds that have come to me through this agency, and we've got proof that they're actually consciously keeping hold of the money and oh. not giving you it. So it's not a case of they haven't been paid. They actually." knowingly are withholding it from you for their own profit in some way, whether it's making money on that or just because they need the cash flow for their business or whatever it is. Or like things, you might get a buyout, you do a shoot and you get paid, they pay you a certain amount for the rights to air it. And then if they air it again for a second year, say you're meant to get that money again, yeah. but they just won't inform you and they'll keep the money. Yeah. So yeah, there's some, it's very rare. Most agencies, like established agencies are really good, but there are one or two that are just, yeah. Is there not, is there an issue that there's not too many agencies now because there's lots of really crap, non real. Yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of like people claiming to be agencies, but they're not because they don't, they don't have the right relationships with the directors and they're sending you to jobs that are like 50 pounds for 10 hour a day. It's like, mm, no, I don't think yeah. you're an agency, are yeah, you? That's like under minimum wage. It's, it's and, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's crazy. It's offensive as well, but they'd like jumping on the bandwagon of being an agency thinking they're going to make money from well, it. There's two things hard. involved. There's a, there's the tag. The tag is a big thing. Um, I always reference internationally published model mm -hmm. as a phrase because it's just bollocks. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah, what does it mean? It, if if I go and I end up on Crime Watch over in Spain, am mm -hmm. I internationally published? 
you know it's it's, it's <laughs> yeah, just it's what's, what, what does that mean what, what are you saying and when yeah. you say like agency represented it's like i think anyone that really knows what they're talking about would go which agency because you yeah. could say agency represented but which agency yeah of course that's important i think i say i think i might say agency represented on my bio but that's more that's that's more but for, you have contact details for your agency yeah of course and it, and it's, it's also more for commercial people that might come across my profile to be like oh okay good i can book her through an agency because they would brands would never usually book you outside of an agency like big brands yeah which is why you need an agency but yeah so just to be like yeah don't not consider me because you think i'm a freelancer or whatever right. yeah so I, I think it's the tag that people will just accept any treatment to be given the tag of oh i'm agency representative so they don't care that it's actually no benefit other than the word yeah, yeah they'll yeah. take it just because they get the word yeah definitely it goes back to the fakery thing mm -hmm. i guess it's just it's a lot of nonsense in the industry <laughs> i think that the union thing has been a brilliant sort of underpinning thing to have at the end of this so i, yeah, I just want to say thank cool. you so much for doing this because yeah. it was terrifying and it's just strange, but it's strange it's been, and, yeah i hope everybody doesn't hate me <laughs> you'll be fine i honestly. think i have an ounce of personality <laughs> i'm never gonna live that down <laughs> i'm only joking thank you so much yeah thanks